Hi everyone, and welcome to Creating Environmental Game Assets Part 1. I'm Matthew Doyle. In this multi-part series, I'm going to show you guys how to build something like this Romanesque bridge you see here using Mudbox. But before we can go into Mudbox, we obviously need to create the base mesh. We're going to start out by doing some box modeling here, or extrusion modeling, inside of Maya LT. As a game maker, having Mudbox as part of your pipeline is really going to help you create some very impressive game assets that would otherwise be pretty difficult to do using just a 3D modeling program such as Maya LT and an image editing program like Photoshop. Mudbox will allow you to create things like normal maps as well as displacement maps, ambient occlusion maps, and of course texture maps very easily and very intuitively because it allows you to basically paint directly on the surface of the model using some very familiar tools. It's going to also allow you to do things in the millions of polygon range versus the hundreds or thousands of polygons that you would normally be doing inside of uh, Maya LT. Now obviously the game asset needs to be an asset that fits into memory and obviously if you're doing a mobile game you're going to have even less of that memory to use. So we're not talking about building a multi-million polygon mesh inside of Mudbox and then using that asset directly in the game. But what we are going to do is create that same multi-million polygon asset and then convert that data into normal maps, displacement maps and so on that will make the low res asset look just like that high res asset. And that's where the power of Mudbox lies, especially for creating these types of assets. Before I can actually take this asset into Mudbox, there are some special things I need to do to prepare it. And the most important one is that Mudbox likes all quads, that is all four-sided polygons. So when we're building our asset, in the case of an asset that we're going to take into Mudbox, we're probably going to want to create two versions of it. The first version is our low res game version. This is the asset we'll actually use in game. The second version is going to be a slightly higher poly count version that is made up of all quads that are of homogeneous size. That means they're all pretty close to the same size. Uh, granted, you're not going to get them all perfectly the same size, but as long as they're relatively close, that's kind of what we want to go for when we take it into Mudbox. Mudbox is what's called a subdivision modeling program. So what that means is Mudbox is going to take your low res asset and it's going to subdivide it basically by splitting the polygons. So if you've got a four sided polygon, it's going to split that polygon into four other four sided polygons by creating new edges that run down the vertical and horizontal axis of each polygon. And this is why it's best or I should say Mudbox prefers that you use quads so that they are easier to subdivide. The algorithm doesn't have any trouble subdividing those four-sided polygons as opposed to ingons or triangles. So what you can see here is that I'm basically adding edges to the mesh that I normally wouldn't have for my final game asset. A lot of these edges don't define any details but they do subdivide the mesh so that I have basically homogeneous four-sided polygons everywhere. And this will be the mesh that I end up using in Mudbox. And all we really need to do is duplicate this mesh when we're, when we're finished and then eliminate some of these extra edges so that we, do, we have a mesh for our game that doesn't have all this extra detail. Alternatively, I could have created the low res version of the mesh first, which I basically did. And before I started adding the extra edge details for Mudbox, I could have simply duplicated the mesh and then proceeded to add all of these extra polygons so that Mudbox would subdivide the mesh properly. Now the important thing to keep in mind there is that you need to have the same UV mapping before you do that. So I would have created the base mesh with complete UV mapping before duplicating it and then subdividing it for Mudbox. The reason being is Mudbox not only can you sculpt polygon detail but you can also do texture painting inside of Mudbox and if I didn't have UV maps properly laid out on both meshes, the game asset and the Mudbox version, if they weren't the same then obviously there would be problems with the final texture I paint in Mudbox as well as any normal or displacement maps that I extract. So we want to make sure that both versions of the asset share the same UV maps and we'll get to UV mapping here very soon. 
But as you can see, I'm just continuing here to add the details for Mudbox, making sure that all the polygons are four-sided and that they are roughly homogeneous all the way around the mesh. Now there are a few things to keep in mind when you're UV mapping an asset for Mudbox. A lot of times in game development, artists will overlap the UV maps of their meshes. Now this is fine in Mudbox. You can overlap UVs if you want to paint certain parts of a mesh using the exact same texture space. However, if you overlap UVs such as I'm doing now, you will have problems when you're extracting normal and displacement maps out of Mudbox. You're going to have some issues there. So, in this case, I'm not overlapping any of my UVs. Okay, so our UV map is completed. But there is one more thing we need to cover before we can take the model into Mudbox. And that is creased edges. Inside of my LT, if you press 3 on the keyboard, you're going to see a high-res version, subdivided version of the mesh but we can see here that the bridge does not look the way we want it. It's way too rounded. To solve that problem, we can crease some edges. And you want to make sure you do that before you go into Mudbox, because in Mudbox, when you subdivide the mesh, it's going to look the same way if there aren't creased edges. So you just need to select the edges using Edge Mode, and then use the Crease Edge tool, which is going to be found in the Mesh Tools Marking menu. And then you'll interactively adjust those creases to get the nice creased edge. Alright, so all that's left is to export our model as an FBX file. Now that we've exported our model, we can jump into Mudbox and go into our file menu and choose Import. And then we'll import the FBX file that we exported from LT. Right away we can see our base mesh inside of Mudbox here. It's a little bit dark because of the default gray color. I have wireframe mode turned on so you can see all of the polygons of our base mesh just as we modeled it inside of my LT. Now before we proceed, we're going to change the material here. Under Material Presets, we're going to use this default material. That way we can see our mesh a little better here. Alright. Next up, we're going to add some subdivision levels here. We can use the menu under Mesh for Add Subdivision Level, or we can press Shift-D on the keyboard, as long as our mouse is over the object. So I've added two levels here. You can see as I add the levels that it's maintaining the creased edges we set up in Maya LT and we're adding polygons. Alright, we'll subdivide it a few more times here. Now we're up to level 4. And now level 5. And level 6. Take note in the top right and the very bottom you can see how many polygons the mesh is up to as well as how much memory your video card is using as well as the number of subdivision levels. One more, make it level 7, and this will bring us to roughly 7 million polygons. So this is the way Mudbox works when it subdivides. Here we have our four-sided polygon, our quad. And what Mudbox does is draws a line right down the middle of that polygon, both vertical and horizontal, and creates new polygons. And then it continues to do that every time you add a new subdivision level. Now, if we had used a triangle anywhere on our mesh, Mudbox potentially will have problems subdividing the mesh, so you get something like this. And this is not something that we want to see in a properly subdivided mesh. Now normally, you wouldn't start sculpting on a mesh at this high of a detail level. You'd start at a much lower res. However, because all we're doing with this mesh is using it to create normal and displacement maps, we're going to go ahead and sculpt at the highest level. First of all, I'm going to start out with this simple stamp here, or stencil I should say. And I'm going to use the key keys on the keyboard, the S key, and my mouse buttons left, right, and middle. You can see on the bottom left there explaining what those different combinations do. We have Rotate, Scale, and Move. And I'm brushing with the Sculpting tool using that stencil to just add some grain to the top level or level 7 of the bridge. And the only reason why I'm doing this is just to kind of give it something more than a smooth surface to look at. Alright, and now we're going to use a second stencil. This one's got some very interesting patterns to it. And these are all default stencils built into Mudbox. You can add new stencils and stamps, and you'll see that process here in a little bit. 
All right, that looks good. Just adding a little detail here. And this is the kind of stuff that will show up really well inside of a normal map. Okay, we're adding a new layer here and we're gonna call this the brick layer. This is where we're going to create kind of a ghost of bricks that we want to use for sculpting out the main forms of the bricks. To do that, I'm gonna to go to the Mudbox community. So under the help menu, communities, Mudbox community, and we're gonna to go to the library here. And in here, you're gonna find all kinds of great stamps and stencils that will allow you to very quickly lay down some interesting textures and patterns. So I'm going to search for stone. And let's see what we can come up with. Okay, so there's some really interesting stencils in here for stone. I'm looking for something more like bricks though. This isn't bad, but not quite what I'm looking for. Here we have one right at the very bottom here, stone wall. This looks about like what I'd like to use for my bridge. It's not exactly right, but it's pretty close. So we'll go ahead and download it here. Okay, so back in Mudbox, after we've downloaded our stamps and stencils, you can see the brick pattern here. You can also hide the stencil, pressing Q. Now I'm rotating by holding down S and using the left mouse button, which in the case of my Cintiq is actually just the pen tip. And what I want to do is line it up so that it basically has the right size to the bricks and the right flow across the surface of the bridge. Now you'll see here that I'm in perspective mode, which makes it kind of hard to get this stamp to, or stencil to line up properly. But if you click this drop down arrow on the view cube, you can set it to orthogonal. And now we get a nice flat orthogonal view that I can now paint the stencil across more accurately. All right, so now we're just nudging the stencil into place, getting it just right. All right, so we're gonna use the sculpt tool and make sure we're not using a stamp image. Okay, so now we can turn our stencil on and just drag across the surface with the sculpt tool. All right, and as we drag, we're creating that basic pattern. All right, that looks good. All right, now we can do the other side of our bridge. I could have used symmetry on the first side, and that would have automatically painted this side, but we're just gonna go ahead and do this. It's pretty easy and quick to do in this case, so we'll just go ahead and do what we did before and paint this side using the stencil. And I'm working very subtly here with a very small amount of pressure on my pen and very small amount of strength to the brush. I just want to ghost these bricks on here. I don't want them to be too big, just like that, because I'm actually going to manually sculpt in the bricks. All right, so we'll jump down a subdivision level here. And we'll make sure we turn off all of our stencils. And using the sculpting tool, I'm just gonna start to basically carve in some bricks here. First of all, I'll add a new layer for this particular level. We'll call this layer bricks. And I'm gonna drag it towards the bottom. And I'm just gonna slowly but surely, using the sculpting brush, just kind of paint in the bricks following the ghosted pattern. All right, so we've got a very small size and a very low strength on our brush here, just using the sculpt tool, laying in the basic shapes of the bricks, using the ghosted image that I sculpted on earlier as a pattern for me to build my bricks, and just drawing the bricks in and adding some depth to them. Now, if this were a more modern bridge, obviously we'd want to have much more even bricks that don't look so weathered. But I wanted to go with something more archaic and ancient, uh, this Romanesque bridge. So the bricks are gonna be more weathered and damaged so they can have a lot of bumps. Now I can use the flatten brush to just kind of even them out to some degree. 
Don't want them to be too bumpy. All right, so the process you're seeing now is basically the same process I'm going to use for all of the rest of the bricks. Just using the sculpt brush to rough them in and then using the flatten brush to kind of clean them up a little bit. I don't want to clean them up completely. I do want to leave some variation because that gives the bricks a lot more character than if I just made them perfectly flat. All right, so you can see the difference here that that makes. Now here we've got to make the bricks run in a different direction. So I'm going to use the erase brush to erase out some of the work I've done here. Because the bricks that run on the perimeter of the arch will be running in a different direction than the rest of the bricks. You want to remember to work on layers. You don't want to work on the base mesh itself. One way to create the bricks on the perimeter of the arch would be to take a brick shape and then draw straight around the arch using the steady stroke and have that brick pattern following your stroke. However, in the interest of time, I'm just going to rough in these bricks manually using the sculpt tool. I don't happen to have a good stamp that I could use here, so I'm just going to quickly rough them in and we'll go from there. So there's no need at this point to worry if the bricks don't look right. Right now we just want to get the basic shape. Adjusting the fall off here gives us a slightly different shape to our bricks. And now we'll use the flatten brush here to just flatten out some of these bricks that are a little too round. Inside of the flatten brush properties under advanced, I'm going to change orient to surface. I'm going to check that. And now our rounded bricks are starting to look more like bricks. And we'll just work our way around the arch, flattening out the bricks. All right, so we're going to go ahead and stop here, and I will see you guys in part two as we continue to sculpt the bridge in Mudbox.